Hello everyone and welcome to Photo Justice Photo Moment. This is a pre-recorded one, not a live one, because I'm here at the Lumix Luminary Summit with Matt Frazier here from Panasonic. Yes, that's me. That is you. <laughs> that is you, right? Yeah, uh, good. allegedly. Yeah. Alleg allegedly, well, that's what they say. And I asked Matt to come on here and record a little segment with me about the autofocus, continuous autofocus functionality of the GH5 and specifically what all the different menu items mean, because they're just a little bit on the confusing side and he can explain it way better than I can. Yeah, so we have the ability to customize the autofocus systems, both for video video as well as photography. Right. So why don't we go ahead and walk through the photography settings first. Perfect, let's start with that. Um, so I have the menu up right now, okay. and what we're gonna notice is right now it's grayed out. You don't have the ability to customize it. Okay. And that's because we're in AFS for AF single. Um, these functions are really designed for continuous shooting. So the minute we flip this to AFC, you can see that now it's turned on okay. and we're able to access it. So once we're in AF custom settings, which is really designed for burst photography, you'll see that we have four different settings. Um, I'm gonna reset this to the default setting. And what you'll see is that we have four different presets, set one, set two, set three, and set four. Each of them have a description of what they are sort of optimized for. Now, this is our engineer's opinion of what <laughs> it'll work best for. Um, you may want to set something for yourself. So I'm going to go through number one, which is the versatile basic setting, and I'm going to customize it the way I like to shoot. Okay. So the first thing I've noticed is that when we do AF sensitivity, um, this is the how sensitive the camera is to a change in focus. Is it gonna be trying to change focus if I move just this much in front of the camera, or do I have to move more like this and this to have it change the focus? Okay. So if I set this to locked on. So we're looking at the numbers on the bottom. Exactly, so negative two would be very sensitive to changes. Minute changes in position are gonna be adjusted. So it's trying to lock onto your subject. That's what Ex that's telling you. Precisely. Okay. The next one is AF area switching sensitivity. Again, this is how quickly it's gonna make those transitions happen. It's, it's, the first one is how locked on it will be. The second one is how responsive is it gonna to be to make those changes. Is it gonna be lightning quick or is it gonna be a little more gradual in its focus acquisition? Okay. Um, I usually set that to locked on as well. Um, because if I'm doing something where someone's running right to the camera or I'm really trying to show how fast the system is, I found that both of these in negative two gives us the most responsive option. Okay, so in, in a sense, the negative numbers are giving us faster, more responsive. More locked on. More locked on to your subject focusing. Exactly. Okay. Now, the final option is moving subject or moving object predictability. And what this really comes down to is we, we've this is really nerdy, but we've added vectoring protocols. We, we have the ability to tell what direction the object is moving, uh, whether it's at an angle or moving toward the camera, away from the camera. This predictive capability allows us to see into the future of where we think the object is going to go. Okay. Now, if we set it to variable, the example I usually give is, let's say I was shooting a race, three people running and they're running toward me. Okay. I may want the camera to choose the lock on the object that's closest which means I'm gonna want it to be varying its look. Subject's moving closer, it would naturally try to choose the closer object and focus on that. Okay. If I'm shooting my kids in a race, my kid might not win, so. <laughs> I still want them in focus. Exactly, so I'm gonna lock on constant and that's gonna keep the my initial focused object to stay constantly in focus. Okay. Um, so what I found is that the most consistent demo that I do is to set this to constant, negative two, negative two, and then I can have things running at this camera, and it's amazing how fast it'll autofocus and lock. So let's go back to the settings again, go up to the AF sensitivity. So sure. the other end of locked on at minus two is plus two responsive. Correct. So locked on meaning it's gonna lock onto that subject. Right, responsive. so let's say something gets in the way. Okay. Let's say that I'm locked onto my object as it's moving forward, and something were to cross paths with what I'm shooting. If I'm in responsive, it has a tendency to wanna to lock onto the object that's then moved into frame, and it'll pull it off into focus. Okay. So it's less likely to stay connected to the object. Re it's responsive to whatever's happening on the scene. It exactly. sees something. Is it, is it going to basically primarily look for what's closest? If it sees two objects, it's going to grab the closest thing? Is it most biggest dominant, thing? Most typically dominant? most dominant in the frame. Okay. I, that's a good way to look at it. Okay. So most dominant frame. Okay. So responsive means most dominant frame thing in the scene is what it's going to try and focus on. Correct. Locked on means whatever you initially focus on, whatever you initially pointed at, that's just gonna try and hold on to that. Exactly. And this is while we're in the 255 zone. 256 point. 256 yeah. point 
focus yep. mode. Okay. Now, if you do a customized setting, um, it'll still have vectoring as well. So if you customize a, a, a field, but what you have to remember is that it's only going to work within that field. So if the object moves outside of those focus points, it's no longer going to be vectoring or, or tracking it. And that's where the joystick comes in handy because you can move the joystick with the object as it's moving. Okay, got it. And then now the next one, the moving object prediction. Oh, sorry, no, the area, the area, area, switching, area sensitivity. switching sensitivity. Okay, so the again, the one end is locked on responsive. Yeah. Same again, thing. very similar explanation to what I gave earlier. If an object is moving into frame, this will have a tendency to then want to lock on the more dominant object as it moves in the frame. Okay. So if unpredictable things are getting into the shot, the camera's natural tendency is if that object is more dominant to try to shift over to it. Okay. All right. Okay. I think that all makes sense. And now you can save this. Can you create your own set? Well, set one, two, three, and four are your presets, and then you can obviously customize them okay. any way that you see fit. Okay, um, once you've done that, you just press set and it's stored. And that's it. Okay. okay. And then for video, you need to be in the uh, creative movie mode. Right. The, so, the real movie mode. Well, and you, actually, you know what? I take that back. You don't need to be in the creative movie mode. It, you just need to be in the movie menu. So whether I'm uh, right now, I'm in creative movie mode, but mm -hmm. I could be in the any mode as long as I go to the movie menu. Oh, the okay. second tab. The second tab, right. So as you can see, we are in the movie mode, right? and we could access this from the photo mode or the movie mode. It's the second tab down. It's page one of four. Um, it'll be labeled AF custom setting video. And the other one said AF custom setting photo. Exactly. So you know exactly, right? Right. So it's default is off, <clears throat> which is just going to be the natural autofocus system from the camera without any customization. Okay. Well, that's actually, I hadn't thought about that, turning it off completely. So now if I'm in AF continuous mode, I've turned this off. What is it like? I mean, is it going to be, is it still better than what the GH4 had as far as it's focus silky, tracking? It's silky smooth. It's silky smooth. That's kind of the way to look at it. <laughs> the idea is to try to keep the focus from being jarring or abrupt. Okay. It's sort of a general catch-all for autofocus. Okay. Um, but if you need something more responsive, uh, this is obviously not the best solution. So okay. what we would do is we would go to set, and you're going to have a couple of different options. Um, we have the speed. This is how quickly is it going to be willing to make changes so sometimes that can be disruptive. So if I'm doing, a, let's say I'm a vlogger and you know you got the camera pointed at yourself, having this camera quickly changing its focus could be incredibly distracting as it's trying to lock on what's going on. Okay. So what we would do is we would set the AF speed into the negatives so that once it's locked on the object, it's less likely to then try to drift on itself. And remember, your arm position can be changing and having the camera constantly hunting as it's changing, you know, a little bit each time you're moving can be very distracting. But if you're, so you're using this vlogging example, and instead of the 255 area, you can set it to face detection. Right. Right. So you're pointing the camera at yourself. Right. If I'm moving forward and back a little bit, I want, like, I never want my face to go out of focus even for a frame. But Wouldn't you don't want, want it hunting. Be... You don't want it hunting during that either. And so the right. problem is that you could add a bit. Sometimes you'll have some hunting that's happening where it's locked on you but it's always making these minor changes in focus as it sees oh, okay. a need to. And remember, you still have some range of movement that, that you're still within your hypofocal distance oftentimes. Right, okay. So there's no reason for you to have the lens constantly hunting for focus. Okay. If you have this much depth of field, to have it moving you know, an inch here or there, not changing your focus on your face, but changing something in the background where it's constantly surging on you, that would not be a very good look. Okay. So by setting this to uh, AF speed of slower, what we end up with is a much less often hunting autofocus system. Interesting. On the other end, if I'm tracking something that's very fast, I would then go all the way to fast. So if I'm shooting a model walking down a runway or I've got kids running around. Skateboarder, snowboarder, the kind of things that I was just doing over the weekend. Right. You You're want that high fast. speed. Okay. Exactly. And then the sensitivity again has to do with how willing it is to shift its focus to another subject. So is it staying locked onto that subject or is it really just going to pull on the most dominant object that's in the frame? Okay. So if we go to locked on, again, for a snowboarder, right. that would probably be ideal. Okay. That way if somebody else cuts in front as they're making a jump or whatever, they're going to stay locked on that subject and not pick the guy that kind of came into frame. Interesting. And okay. on the other end, it would be very responsive, so it would pick the guy as he's coming into frame. Okay. Wow. Okay, so for most fast action sports, you probably want to crank the AF speed, pull down the sensitivity. Yeah, that's, that's what I would think. Okay. Um, and then you get set and it would store it. And then you just need to make sure you turn it to on. Okay. Okay. All right. And here you don't have presets like we did in the still photography mode. No. Okay. No, none of those. None of those. None of those presets. All righty. Very good. Well, that, that explains a lot. And I know for a lot of our viewers, it's going to be huge because people are really 
really excited about this camera. That's for sure. Yeah. And we're getting so many questions. The videos that I've already done, the interviews with Sean and, and so on have been tremendously, tremendously useful. People are very happy about it. So this is great because we obviously hadn't been able to get into this before. So now people can understand what it does. Well, I can't wait to see what people can create with this. Yeah. I think they're going to be shocked at the photo capabilities and how fast this thing can track. It is amazing. Yeah. It's just phenomenal what it does. As I've already seen, shooting the snowboarder and the skateboarders is just, it's incredible. So yeah. right on. Well, thank you very much for coming on here. Appreciate it. I know it's the end of the day. It's time to be at the bar, not here, but. Yeah, I think it's beer, beer 30. Beer it's, 30? it's definitely past beer 30. All right. Let's go get one. Thanks thank a lot. You. Appreciate your help. Thanks, guys. See you guys. Bye-bye.